You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I am one of your hosts today, Jimmy Wong, joined by the one and only Rachel, Rachel Weeks. Weeks. It's me. Hey, Rachel. How's it going? Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited it, to be here. It's very good to have you. Uh, you're a fan favorite in the comments. I don't know if you read the yeah. comments, but uh, always you. shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't. But thanks. But I thanks. see you. Yeah, and we'll see you in the comments this time around too. Uh, we are back now with part two of the box topper review from dominaria united so these are special legendary creatures that are all based off of prior ones from the past if you want to check out part one or any of the other set reviews for the legendary creatures monocar legendaries the uncommons make sure to go to our youtube channel you can find it all there of course we're going to talk about a lot of cards today and we got to talk about our sponsors as well so channelfireball.com slash command is the place to go if you want to pick up any magic products single sealed you name it they got it and you're shopping from local game stores around the country these are stores that are certified as well as trusted and also they're local to a lot of awesome peoples which means that you are actually supporting a store that players will go to and play at and you're going to get the cards you need at the quality you want at a great price so check out channelfireball.com slash command or just enter promo code command at checkout and you're going to be well on your way to building a great deck or whatever you're trying to do draft you name it also once you get those cards put them into an ultra pro sleeve or product go to ultrapro.com slash command they have a great store there they're always having deals any single national holiday that we have here in the United States is probably going to be a deal. They got Father's Day deals, Labor Day deals, you name it. You can pick up some amazing product for really cheap prices. And the great thing is it's all ultra pro. So it's all great quality. It's what Josh and I have been trusting for a long, long time to protect our cards. So if you just head on over ultrapro.com slash command or pick up ultra pro product at your local retailer, wherever you want, you're supporting the show either way. Finally, last way to support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone. We shout out one lucky patron every single week. So this week's episode is dedicated to Shane Swope. Shane, you rock. Okay, let's just get right into it because we got a long show ahead of us, Rachel. You've already yes. done a couple of episodes in. There's so many new legendaries. Oh my goodness. I, uh, I heard from Truck that there are 270 new legendaries this year this so year, far. And we're not even <laughs> done yet. We're not even at 270 days in the year as of the recording of this episode. <laughs> uh, notably, these are not in the set. Uh, yes. These are box co topper cards. So there's 20 loose commanders that you could open anywhere. And uh, there's some cool familiar names. So it was fun to see some new takes on yeah. some old characters that we know and love from Magic lore. Yeah, and they're all based off of the original original legends that were printed way back in the day and are not really commander viable but now have been retooled and re-updated sort of like their uh, 2022 refresh <laughs> so let's kick things off with glow up it is a glow up <laughs> <laughs> let's kick things off with roga care keep overlord so we're first going to go through the Cobalt history channel here uh so you might recognize roga from his original legends card which is roga of care keep or from his son's debut card rogrok son of roga uh, yeah. You know Rogue Rock. I well. did. I almost, I almost had to play Roga on game nights because I played oh, his son. That's <laughs> right. I, I guess the Kobolds really like the letters R and K when it comes to their naming conventions. And uh, the even though Rogue Rock, Rogue Rock creates Kobold tokens called Kobolds of Care Keep, that's actually an original card from uh, Legends way, way back in the day. And there are three of them. And they're all zero costs and they're all zero ones. It's Kobolds of Care Keep, uh, Crimson Kobolds, and Crookshank Kobolds. So that's a lot of Kobold action. Uh, and they're all zero drops for zero one, which is kind yeah. of cool. So um, let's read read Roga uh, for everybody. Yeah, it's, good call. <laughs> uh, Roga is a kobold warrior for three black red. He's a four four that says other kobolds you control get plus two plus two. Whenever you cast a kobold spell, you may pay two. If you do, create a four four red dragon creature token with flying. Hey -o. Whenever you cast a dragon spell, you create a zero one red kobold creature token named Kobolds of Care Keep. Yeah. So a little confusing because Kobolds of Care Keep is a real card. Yes. Like I just said. <laughs> uh, but it's also a token now. So you can have a token called Kobolds of Care Keep as well as the card itself. They're all zero ones. Um, don't get the creature confused with the original creature. I think a lot of players, if they play this, they'll use this the original old, card. The old card. As that's, like a token. That's a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's kind of like red's ornithopter, I guess, because you can play it for zero mana. For sure. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think I think lore wise, kobolds are like servants of dragons. I think yes. they're supposed they're like a dragon minions. Of minions, sorts. yeah. They're helping uh, out. So yeah, when you cast a kobold, you make a dragon. When you cast a dragon, you make a kobold. They're all they're buddies. I they think are buddies. <laughs> I think it's fun. I think it's fun. The first question I think we have to ask is if you're going to build this deck, are you trying to cast more kobolds or are you trying to cast more dragons? Because there's a payoff either way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we can all agree that kobolds seem to be a much better payoff. You, you get, get a, a dragon out of it. A 4-4, four, four, yeah. <laughs> and you can play a bunch of them that cost zero mana, so right. you just basically play a zero, zero, one. It gets plus two, plus two because of the commander, and then you make mm-hmm. a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, so that's a lot of value for just casting a cheap creature. You have to pay the additional two yeah. to make the dragon token. Um, but for most of these, it's going to be you pay two mana, you make a 4-4 four, four flying, and you get a 2-3 body like because yeah. of these zero, zero drops. So It's pretty good. So yeah, two mana for a 4-4 four, four dragon, two bodies, and they get pumped as well. The biggest issue is there aren't a ton of kobolds. There's the ones that we've listed. They've created a couple in uh, the last few years. So Minion of the Mighty also cares about right. dragons. It's a and d card, yeah. There is another kobold that was created in this set. It's Rosnacht, heir of Roga. So Ooh. another, we got another... Is it another sun or just an heir? I don't know. It feels like... It feels like Rograk is getting stiffed here, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I thought that he's the sun. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure who Rosnacht is in the Roga... Uh, hierarchy, hierarchy in maybe, the yeah. <laughs> it is the heir to Roga. Maybe it's an older brother. Maybe and, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe older sister. Who knows? Someone, please tell us. Uh, yeah, Ro- Rosnock. Oh, it is a sister. Yes, that's right. Um, um, and then the other, there's also Taunting Kobold that's been released in the same set as well. But so if you can't get that many Kobolds, then what can we do to get more Kobold triggers? As always, changelings. Woohoo! So there's a lot of upside to casting changelings with uh, Rogan on the battlefield because they're both kobolds and dragons. Yep. Uh, so you want to be able to pay that extra cost. So the cheaper the changelings, the better, uh, I think, in yeah. this deck uh, because you're going to have to pay the, the bonus cost anyway. And you'll get... So when you cast it, you'll get both the triggers off of Rogan. You'll get the pay two to make a 4-4 four, four, mm-hmm. and you'll also automatically get a 0-1 kobolds of care keep. Pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty good. And there's a lot of cheap changelings in these color- colors. So we've got changeling outcast, which, which is one uh, black and can't be blocked. Universal automaton is colorless and just one mana. Uh, the two mana ones are firebelling changeling and skeletal changeling. And then Torian Mauler is just always a thick baby. <laughs> yeah, it gets and plus one, plus one every time an opponent casts a spell. We've seen, was it Mana Gorge or Hydra? Yeah. It's like cards like that just get out of control. So, um, yeah, you cast these you cast these changelings, you get yourself a dragon, you get yourself a kobold, and they get buffed in addition. It's worth noting that, uh, yeah, this is a cast trigger, so... Yeah, you can't uh, just ETB a kobold and yeah, have it happen. You do have to make sure that they a spell actually goes on the stack but changeling is both on the stack yeah there's also black market connections which if you've seen the last game nights josh used to extremely uh effective measures because you can just make a three two colorless shape shifter creature with changeling mm-hmm. every single one of your up or sorry your pre-combat main phases so that's pretty good as well so it won't it won't trigger roga because they're entering the battlefield but, but it, they will be five fours. Yeah, that's which right. Because seems plus pretty two plus good. Two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good. And work really well with all of your tribal stuff that you want to sneak in there. Yeah, and because again we are stretching the need, the ability to you right you want to have more changelings, but there are and, and cobalts, but there aren't that many. So I think getting to reuse your cobalts, replaying them, recasting them, getting more four fours, is kind of where you want to be. You want to continue the chain and keep the pressure on. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of ways to do that. The big one is Cloudstone Curio, which I'll read because it will come up a few times it's a three mana artifact whenever a non-artifact permanent comes into play under your control you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand so if you have two creatures out or one creature out you play another creature you can say hey look creatures and creatures they share permanent types i'm going to bounce the other one back to my hand so it's a great way to rebuy cards and then recast them again and because rogue cares about cards being cast this is great it can only be from your hand that's a very explosive turn, right? Because if you have if you have like two of the one or two like zero drop kobolds, yeah. you can cast it, pay two, make a dragon, bounce the other one, cast, cast it, it, pay two, make another dragon, bounce the other one, ca- 
like you you can put together a very scary board in a very short amount of time with Cloudstone Curio. Yeah, and it also leads directly to some infinite stuff, which we'll talk about in a second. But other cards that do this sort of bouncing thing for cheap would be Erratic Portal, which is also good on defense if you're trying to bounce someone else's stuff. Uh, and then cards like Skull Collector. I love this guy. Yeah, I've never seen this card before. It's pretty it's funny. It's pretty cool. And I think it's good with return- returning Cobalt to your hand. It's a three mana, three, three. It's one black, black. And it says at the beginning of your upkeep, return a, oh, a black creature you control to its owner's hand. That actually so that works. Work. No, but that does work with Skeletal Changeling and Grave yeah, Shifter. With some of your, your, changeling, your changeling guys. So you get to reuse that cast trigger every time. Uh, one of the ones that I liked was No Rest for the Wicked. Uh, it's one in a black for an enchantment. It says, sacrifice no rest for the wicked. Return to your hand all creature cards that were put there from the graveyard, uh, put into your graveyard Ooh, from play this turn. Okay. So if you have a sack outlet or if you, there was a board wipe, you can sacrifice this, get all of the creatures back that you had cast and recast Cast. them. I actually uh, like No Rest for the Wicked a lot because you can play this very early on and just have it And just sit let there. it sit there. Yeah. Um, and it's not going to eat a removal spell because it feels terrible to remove, <laughs> uh, yeah. I think. Especially when all you're getting back is kobolds. <laughs> yeah, that come with 4-4 four, four dragons occasionally. Yeah, so I... I think No Rest for the Wicked is some interesting tech here, and I think there's going to be a couple of uh, cards that do that. Like Garn of the Blood Flame does a similar thing. Yeah. Uh, I really like No Rest for the Wicked. It reminds me of Fortell, where you pay two mana early on, and yeah. you get a really cheap thing to cast on that to sort of do later on. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's it's a cool one. Uh, another good effect for like this is Phyrexian Reclamation. So this card is great. This card is always good, especially if you want that cast trigger. Uh, yep. It's a, an enchantment for a single black that says one in a black, pay two life, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So again, with sack outlets, you can return a kobold to your hand, recast it, mm-hmm. get another dragon, and tr- rebuild that board quickly after a board wipe. And just good in a lot of decks, not just this one as well. Just so a good, good one. Any kind of deck that plays like Garna or whatever then you're good to go there. Yeah. Um, I like Heirloom Blade. So it's a three mana artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus one. It equips for one, which is nice. So it turns your kobolds into zero ones that are now two threes that are now five fours. Whenever equipped creature dies, you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you can have a kobold suited up. If it dies or whatever, you automatically going to draw a changeling or a kobold. Again, you're in black red, so getting these sort of like incremental advantages is really nice. Yeah, and it just means that um, you know, especially with sack outlets in this deck, because you're reusing cast triggers. I think yeah. ha- having another card in your hand to trigger it again is going to be really important. Yeah. Now, if you are going the dragon route, there aren't that many cheap mana valley dragons out there. Most of them are like. Three mana, four mana. And so I don't think you care about the payoff, which is just a free zero one. Mm-hmm. But certain dragons do like to see other things entering the battlefield. So Terror of the Peaks says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So Pretty all good. your so this with Cloudstone Curio and two zero drops and you have your commander out, they're gonna be three twos every single time. Right? Three twos? No. Two, two threes. threes. Yeah. You'll be able to infinitely deal two damage to everyone with Terror of the Peaks out. So, uh, same with Scourge of Valkus, but it's mm-hmm. about dragons entering the battlefield. Um, so, again, these are just ways to take advantage of that dragon side. I really like Ganax in this deck. It's He's a card from uh, from Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I've been looking to try and play this card more, too. It's pretty cool. It's a legendary dragon for four and a red. He's a 3-4. It says, whenever Ganax or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a treasure token. Woo-hoo. So if you cast the, that co- that kobold, you pay the two, you get the dragon, you also get a treasure for your trouble. So it effectively causes one mana each time if mm-hmm. you're able to keep going o- out over and over again. And remember, like, you are getting a free 2-3 out of this if you have your commander on board. Right, so, when you play Gantt. Yeah. yeah, so uh, a little bit of dragon synergy goes a long way. And don't forget, every time you play a changeling, you're also getting these triggers for mm-hmm. Ganax, for Scourge of Valkus that care just about dragons, and Dragon Tempest, which is, like, the ultimate win con in a dragon deck. Um, you might also want to play Mass Hysteria, which gives our creatures haste in red. It mm-hmm. just costs one mana for an enchantment. Uh, And then Aristocrats is another way to go about winning. So let's talk about the infinite combo really quickly here. Um, It's pretty simple. It's made possible. Uh, Our sponsor for this combo today is Cloudstone Curio. Always. If if there's a Cloudstone Curio on the board and you're not dead yet, remove it. Get it removed. Get it off the play. That's definitely one of those woo-woo 
yep. get it out of here, You're cards. in big trouble. So with that out, you can have any of the zero mana kobolds, so Crookshank kobolds, Crimson kobolds, kobolds of care keep, or Rograx and of Roga, and then a card like Mana Echoes. So Mana Echoes is two red red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may add an amount of colorless mana equal to the number of creatures you control that share a creature type with it. Ah, uh-huh. so mm-hmm. you get a little zero one in there, and it sees you and the other kobolds, and it adds some mana, and then with Klaus and Kirio, it's bounced back to your hand, you can recast it, and you're just adding infinite mana. Yeah. And that also means you get infinite dragons. So you can use that colorless mana to make a 4-4 flying as well. Yeah, and if you don't have mana echoes out, you can replace that with Ashna's altar, and then you're just going to get infinite, again, enter the battlefield abilities from the rogue, uh, the rogue rock, sorry, the uh, kobolds coming in and out, and then death triggers, because you can stack them for mana, and so you get infinite, you know, you just get a bunch of stuff. And so that can be an aristocrat win. Yeah, I mean, and... If you can't figure it out with infinite dragons, there's always a blood artist, I guess. But <laughs> infinite dragons seems pretty good to yeah, me. Yeah, infinite dragons, mass hysteria, or any of like vicious shadows types. Is it vicious shadows? There's a card, Warstorm Surge. I think is the card. Warstorm or Surge, Tremors, pa- right? There's Pandemonium, Pandemonium. Terror, ter- terror of the Peaks. There's a lot of ways that you can go from yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. So Rogra, kind of like it. It's kind of fun. He, I think he's cool, and I love I love that they they have leaned into the kobold and dragons together thing because kobolds on their own is hard to support a full deck. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they are so small. They but are, uh, it's yeah. fun that they get to partner with their big big brothers and stuff. Yeah. Okay, moving on, we have Savitri, Dragon Master. More dragons. More dragons. This is two blue and a black for a Planeswalker with four loyalty, and Savitri can be your commander. So uh, Savitri has three abilities. The plus one is until your next turn, creatures can't attack you or Planeswalkers you control unless their controller pays two life for each of those creatures. So it's kind of like propaganda, but with life. Norn's Annex. Norn's Annex, yep, yep. Uh, uh, minus three, search your library for a dragon card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So that takes her from four loyalty down to one. And then should you be able to plus her up enough to get to her minus seven, it's destroy all non-dragon creatures, sort of like Crux of Fate. Okay. Cool. I mean, blue-black dragons is not something that we have seen before. No, and I think Commander Legends Baldur's Gate added a lot of like, hey, check it out, dragons can be in every color. Um, and so I think we're slowly pushing towards that a little bit more here with Savitri. So I think the thing that I liked the most about Savitri, particularly as a build around commander, is this minus three ability that lets you search for a dragon. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many cool dragons, and especially in blue, that you can build around and build a neat deck around yeah it's like uh, a hidden commander right it's you're like perfect i actually want to i always go minus three to get this dragon out or something else into my hand right so if you're like you know what i really like i really like shimmer dragon and i want to build a deck around shimmer dragon savitri sort of lets that non-legendary dragon be in your command zone because you player cast her and you immediately have the card you're looking for in your hand yeah uh shimmer dragon's super cool and makes for an artifact build mm-hmm. uh it's for four blue blue it's a dragon creature that says as long as you control four or more artifacts shimmer dragon has hex proof and it has an activated ability that says tap two artifacts you control draw a card that's pretty spicy it's pretty cool and it has hex proof so once you get it in, in play you can kind of do this secret commander thing yeah uh, pretty cool with that blue black artifacts very good archetype as well um, there's also Ancient Silver Dragon, which I love that you put down here. The, yeah. There's a whole series of these Ancient Dragons. There's Ancient Brass Dragon, which is the black version. They're just nuts powerful, all of them. They're so cool. Uh, you get to roll a d20 when it deals combat damage for both of them. The blue one lets you draw cards equal to the result, and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Woo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> it is an 8-mana card. And then the black version is a 7-mana card, and when, when it deals combat damage, you roll a d20, and you put any number of target creature cards with total mana value X or less from Graveyards onto the battlefield under your control where X is the result. So if you ever wanted to have Ancient Silver Dragon or Ancient Brass Dragon as your commander, well, guess what? Savitri lets you do that by minus threeing her. One of my favorite build-around dragons that has come out lately uh, was Astral Dragon. Like we said, we got a lot of new commanders in Baldur's Gate. This is one of the commander decks. This is a mono-blue dragon for six blue-blue. It's a 4-4. When it enters the battlefield, you can create two tokens that are copies of target non-creature permanent, except there are three three dragon creatures in addition to their other types, and they have flying. What? So if you have like an enchantment in play or if you have a propaganda and you want, you know, two more dragon propagandas, you can do that. 
Um, there is That's kind of pretty nuts. It's yeah. pretty cool. It's very expensive. Eight mana is very sure, expensive sure. to get into play, especially especially in Demir. But you do but, get a copy opponent stuff too, so you could grab two yeah. soul rings and make them into dragons. But right? it's a really cool build around dragon that Savitri sort of lets you put in your command zone. Yeah, totally. Uh, there's also a really neat combo with uh, astral dragon that you can do. It's it's dance of the dead is a is an aura is a uh-huh. uh, it's an enchantment that copies stuff. Right. For so. Blue- Blue, right for blue blue yeah. so you can have your astral dragon come in copy the dance you get two copy the dragon. you get two of those you copy the dragon you get more and more and more you get infinite three three uh dragons and also with summoning sickness with summoning sickness <laughs> do you have to pay an upkeep sure do sure, sure do. Sure oh do. that's right dance of the dead ref- makes you pay two man for you to keep it yeah yeah so you gotta win that turn or you just have a really cool turn that everyone goes, nice. Whoa, that was sweet. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Um, Brain Stealer Dragon, Scourge of Neltoth, just other examples of dragons that you might want to fetch out uh, if for, for the sort of hidden commander mm-hmm. deck. Um, all right, now blue black dragons, we don't see, again, many dragon tribal commanders that care about specifically blue and black because there just haven't been that many historically. But lots of cards will work well with any dragon tribal deck. So Herald Torn, Urza's Incubator. Crux of Fate, which is basically uh, Savitri is minus seven. Mm-hmm. Dragon's Horde is a card that you keep seeing come up over and over again. And then Renari, ancient, uh, Merchant of Marvels, is you may cast Dragon Spells and Artifact Spells as though they had Flash. So, Renari's pretty sweet, especially in blue, like the ability to sneak these big scary things into play. Yeah, because uh, you're holding up a ton of mana yeah. to cast some of these sometimes. For sure. And it, so it's um, not having to commit to the board at the last minute yeah. uh, until the last minute is very cool. I could see Renari and Shimmer Dragon sort of being in the same build and having a lot of fun there. There's also yeah. Lapis Orb of Dragonkind, which is, again, all about artifacts. Yeah, I, I think there's like... If you're building Savitri and and you're just like, you know what, I, I want to build dragons. Yeah. I think you're going to have a tough time. There's not a lot of the dragon support because you don't have red. Yep. But these dragons do sort of live in similar categories. So you could just build, you know what, I'm going to build an artifact deck and I'm going to focus on something like Renari. Totally. Or a uh, Shimmer Dragon. You could put in Steel Hellkite and something like a Lapis Orb of Dragonkind or a Dragon's Horde, um, which we've mentioned all of those but it gives you sort of this like artifacty dragon build mm-hmm, so you mm-hmm. do have to focus the 99 On around that. whatever dragons you're really looking for i think yeah and i do like this savitri also works well in the dragon deck by the way because it creates a propaganda effect mm. when you make it and a lot of people just won't attack you uh so savitri kind of protects herself in that way which is nice mm-hmm. um so there's cards like propaganda obviously coast falls which i've never seen before this so card's awesome. thanks yeah. for adding this to my lexicon do you want to read it? Yeah. So Coastcoon Falls is a, an enchant world. Gotta it's, love those. <laughs> it's an enchantment for two black black that says during your upkeep, tap target untapped creature you control or destroy it. No creature can attack you unless its controller pays an additional two whenever that creature attacks. Yeah. So it's basically propaganda. Propaganda in black in that black. you do have to pay a little bit of an upkeep for. It's just tapping a creature you control and yep. your upkeep. Yep. And then there's collective restraint. That's going to be for four mana because you can only have two basic land types. So there's a lot. And then, oh yeah, war tax as well. Two in the blue, X in blue. Creatures can't attack this turn unless their controller plays X for each attacking creature. This is really nice with Renari Mm because you can hold up mana. You want to cast something and you're like, you know what? X is going to be three in the blue this time and I still have enough mana to cast my thing yeah. and stop everyone from coming at me. Vortex is great if you've got a ton of mana. It gives you... Um, yeah. It, it lets you pick and choose who can attack when uh, and and only use your mana, you know, with this. Yeah, sometimes just paying one in the blue is enough to stop someone because that's a big tax on them yeah. to try and attack you. Yeah, of course. Okay, so let's say we do want to channel our inner dragons here and mm. we touched on this a little bit already, but there are a lot of different dragon toolbox ideas. So with artifacts, again, there's Shimmer Dragon. So let's just say let's say we you want to build around any of these, you here are some ideas for you. So if you're going for an artifact dragon build with Savitri, you got Shimmer Dragon, which we talked about, Steel Hellkite, Renari, and then just lots of artifacts. Pretty simple. If you want to go like aristocrats dragons, then you got a bunch of dragons that like to die. Yeah, Kokusho being the famous, uh, most famous of them. Uh, whenever Kokusho dies, each opponent loses five life. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Pretty good. Which is a bit. Yeah, and Junji the Midnight Sky is the new Kamigawa series of, of I almost said dinosaurs, dragons, <laughs> and they all have death triggers. Um, so Ancient Brass Dragon as well, I think works in the sort of aristocrats thing. It's whenever it deals combat damage. Oh, we already said this one. You get yeah, this up is on the, the reanimator, yeah. reanimator one. 
Uh, speaking of reanimator, Ebon Death, Dracul Dracolich likes to be in the graveyard. You can cast it from the graveyard as well. Um, yeah, and blue gives you plenty of like mill stuff to get these dragons into your graveyard right. if you want to do a more dragon fo- or graveyard focused mm-hmm. build of of uh, Savitri. You could make basically with Savitri a Skitherex blue black infect deck because she Pretty tutors cool. out Skitherex. Yeah, and, and being mono black Skitherex is everyone's going to want to kill you because they know what's happening. But now you can sneak it out on them. Yeah, uh, if you want to sort of go the control route, there's Silumgar, the Drifting Death, which I think was kind of the de facto. It was either this one or the one that steals one, the other Silmgar. Yeah, yeah. There's These there's are the Silmgar. de facto, prior to this, Blue Black Dragon Commanders. Mm-hmm. And then there's, you know, Deathbringer Regent, Brainstealer Dragon we mentioned, and then Dragonlord Silmgar as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's sort of like the theft route. And then, like you said, if you want to go combo, you have Astral Dragon and... And, and Dance, Dance of Many, Many. yeah. A neat, a neat build that I was thinking about. I mean, I have an Orvar deck. I know Josh has an Orvar deck. Oh, yeah, but, Orvar. Uh, you can use Savitri to get Orvar into your hand, and now you have a blue-black Orvar deck because Whoa. he's a changeling. Yeah, that's right. So uh, you can, if, if you want to do, do secret secret Orvar and sneak it into play, you can not You can find him uh, with Savitri as well. Which is there a lot is of spicy fun. additions in black that target creatures like Orvar that's good there's a lot of like whenever this creature dies you can bring a thing back right. which adds just sort of an interesting mix to Orvar so it definitely changes things because everyone's trying to kill Orvar right oh for sure um, and I, I like it taking him out of the command zone a little bit and it gives you better tutors is the other thing yeah and you're in blue black so you can always reanimate it find other ways to protect it bring it back to the graveyard or for the battlefield and all that yeah I think that's kind of a, a neat way to do Savitri Very if you cool. didn't want to go all in on dragons that's cool yeah Savitri just might be the best blue black changeling commander there's ever been because you can just tutor it out okay savitri thank you for being the master of dragons we appreciate you bringing (laughs) a little bit of that spice to the blue black world this next one is sweet and i'm i'm really excited me too to go through this one uh so this is stang echo warrior stang with two g's is back (laughs) and his brother uh so for two a red and a green you get a three four human warrior it says, whenever Stang Echo Warrior attacks, create Stang Twin, a legendary 3-4 red and green human warrior creature token. It enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. For each aura and equipment attached to Stang, create a token that's a copy of it attached to Stang Twin. Then sacrifice all tokens created this way at the beginning of the next end step. Woo-wee! Okay. So, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. This is Gruul. Stang used to just make Stang Twin. It just it was a six mana three four that made another three four. <laughs> yeah, but now Stang Twin is coming in with a lot more than just himself. So any aura or equipment that's attached to the original Stang gets put onto the new one. They're all token copies. Mm-hmm. And then they get sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step. And it's only when Stang attacks, so it doesn't need to be combat damage or any of that stuff. So you get this extra one in, tapped and attacking. Notably, it doesn't have to attack the player that Stang is attacking. You can declare a separate attacker on the attack trigger. Yeah, twins are allowed to make different decisions. They don't have to do everything together. Exactly. We're Uh, different people. (laughs) (laughs) So obviously, we see an end step trigger. The first question is, does this work with Sundial of the Infinite? And yes, yes, it does. So when that trigger goes on the stack, you pay one, tap Sundial of the Infinite, end the turn, activate this ability only during your turn, and then all spells and abilities that are on the stack are exiled. So that yep. means you get to keep staying twin and you get to keep the token copies of the aura and the equipment. Pretty cool. You can re-equip the equipment to something else next turn. You can actually, you can actually put it back on the original Stang, have him attack again, and make another copy of it. <laughs> of course, with the legendary rule, Stang twin will see a version of it and be like, sorry, can't be, can't be here with, with that one. There can only be one Stang twin. Yeah. Now unless. Ha- unless you combine <laughs> it with Mirror Box or Mirror Gallery and then you get Stang triplets mm, aww, there's more and more brothers yep so both mirror box and mirror gallery have similar similar effects the primary one here is the legend rule doesn't apply to permanence you control yeah. uh, so once you have stang twin you can have another stang twin and, and you can have more stang twins you can helm of the host and stang twin yeah. it up it's just the Spider-Man meme, but yeah, Stang. But Stang. <laughs> and then the Stangs are just really buff because they have a yeah. bunch of stuff equipped and aura uh, on them. Um, and of course, you can even add on Parallel Lives and Doubling Season. So this is going to double the tokens you make. Uh, and then you can also gain extra combats as well. You know, you can play Relentless Assault, Combat Celebrant, Aggravated Assault, Seize the Day, or Karlak, Fury of Avernus. So basically, 
if I was to play this deck, I would 100% try and be playing Mirror Box. I would want to swing with Sting a bunch of times so that I get four or five different Sting twins, and they're all equipped out of their minds. <laughs> I, Mirror Box makes for such a mess. I love it so much. Yeah, Mirror Box definitely, especially with Sting. There's just, it, it's just, it seems very fun. Um, okay, doubly parallel. Time to talk about how parallel lives and doubling season works with Stang Twin. Yes. I had to look this up five times. It is confusing. And then, because... ha- and then we had to ask everyone in the office, and then we had to ask someone at Wizards to figure it out. Because first it makes an extra token, and then it makes all the copies of the uh, other yeah. stuff. But where do those go? Right. So let's say we have one Stang out, one Stang Echo Warrior, mm-hmm. and we have one equipment on it. So it's got one, let's say, Lightning Greaves. Yeah. So, Stang goes to combat, and we have doubling season out. Not both parallel lives doubling, just one. Just one. And they have the same uh, same text, which is, if an effect would put one or more tokens on the battlefield under your control, it puts twice that many of those tokens instead in Stang. So, Stang swings, and it's going to create Stang twin, but it's actually going to create two Stang twins because of doubling season. And then it's going to see all the aura and equipment on Stang, and it's going to create two copies of that. However, they only go on one of the Stang twins. So, you will make in this case, two Lightning Greaves, and that Lightning Greaves will go on one Stang Twin. It will not go on the other one. The other Stang Twin will be naked, just staying Ugh, by he, himself. He lost all the nutrients in the womb. They all went to one, <laughs> to yeah, one like, ripped what brother. The heck? Like, why is my brother so buff? Yeah, so it's a little confusing. I, I was like, no, you make four. You don't make two, but you make two because it is Stang himself, the original Stang Echo Warrior, making it, and it's going to double it from there. So... A little confusing, but that's how it works. And every single token also has that same sacrifice at the beginning of the end step clause. So it's not yes. like any of them get around. Um, yeah, so this two They token, all get sacrificed at the same time. Yeah. And they get equipped in, in pairs. Okay, now let's talk about some strategy. So I think with this deck, he, he can copy both artifacts and in, in, or both equipment and auras. Yeah. But I think you really want to focus the deck on one over the other like there can be yeah, bits yeah. Of, of this and that but to get the synergy you need to make this work i think really focusing on auras or really focusing on equipment is is the way to go the way to go um so i personally like auras better for staying because you're in green you have the support of all of the enchantresses uh, yeah. and you have so you have this card draw engine sort of already built in and there's a lot of sweet auras uh yeah that with, do a lot of stuff that have a lot of yeah and have a lot of ETB stuff. Um, yeah, I agree. I think equipment are clunky to begin with, and they're still good, right? If you can get two Sword of Feasts and Famines out because of staying and get double the trigger of that ta- when it hits it's someone. It's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. And again, black green protection is going to, but at the core of it, you're going to run out of steam really fast. You're going to run out of staying really quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's. I think you want to use auras. I agree. Yeah, um, but that being said, there are some sweet equipments that you can include in the deck. Uh, I think Mask of Memory is really cool. You get to draw two whenever any Stang deals damage. Ooh, if you have grabbed the Exoskeleton, it makes them both into five sixes, and then that's just an instant kill if no one's got blockers. That's pretty good if yeah. you can get those Stangs through there. Um, it's going to Stang. So there, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> definitely going to Stang. That one will leave a mark. That will leave a Stang All right. mark. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> oh, I like this. You made this note. Token copies don't have a back, so cards like Dowsing Dagger will not transform. Yeah. Um, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, but the I think the I got ahead of myself a little bit, but I think the Enchantress is a really cool way to go because you have Argothian Enchantress, Enchantress's Presence, Verdurin Enchantress, and Citizen Champion. These are all cards that say whenever an enchantment. Well, when you do cast an enchantment. Well, some of them. Yeah. So Argothian Enchantress and Enchantress's Presence and Verdurin. Uh, and Verdurin Enchantress all say whenever you cast an enchantment spell, draw a card. So that's uh, whenever you put a, put one on original Stang, you draw a card. Still yeah. pretty good. When the ones the... that are insane in this deck are the Constellation Enchantresses, and yeah. that's Citizen Champion uh, and the other one that's an enchantment, enchantment itself. Yeah. Citizen it says, is just whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, you put right. a plus and plus counter on the champion, and you draw a card. So, so for every, so when you make the token copies of auras and they Ooh. enter the battlefield onto the second twin, you draw a card for each one that enters. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good so 
Every time you attack, if you make like two two aura copies, you draw two cards. Yeah, you draw two cards. Uh, so you can do some really some really sweet stuff with auras in this deck. And I think because you're putting auras on Stang, you really really want the card advantage so you don't get hugely blown out. Yeah, by that would a suck. removal spell. Yeah, and there's actually a lot of cards. So now that we're making auras enter the battlefield, there is a whole list of enter the battlefield auras that could be really good. So Cartouche of Strength. This one's cool. Yeah, when it enters the battlefield, you may have enchanted creature fight target creature and opponent controls and it gives your creature plus one plus one and trample so it's going to enter again with staying twin you can have it fight something else get some blockers out of the way mm -hmm. uh you also have great ones like dragon mantle this card i think is it, this is really where the deck starts to shine because they're all one man enchantments that right. draw cards so dragon mantle is a red mana for an enchant creature and when it enters the battlefield draw a card and then it gives it fire breathing so it can play a red to get plus one plus out end of turn but yeah, you put it on Stang, you draw a card, you attack, make a copy, put it goes on Stang to win, and you get another ETB, you draw another card. Yep. Uh, a similar card is Frog Tongue. <laughs> this art. It's amazing. <laughs> it's old school folio. Uh, so when Frog Tongue comes into play, draw a card. Uh, and then it says enchanted creature can block creatures with flying. So oh, it's it like gives a frog it, tongue. It gives it reach. You can snap them right out of the air. It gives the Stang brothers a horrifying <laughs> tongue. <laughs> Uh, one of the better ones, I think, is Citizen Training. Uh, it's another thing when it comes in, you draw a card, mm -hmm. and it gives this uh, equipped or the enchanted Stang plus one plus O oh, and Trample. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, there's cards that also care about damage triggers. So if you know your Stangs are getting through because you've given them Trample or whatever, you got Snake Umbra, which has Totem Armor, so it's great. It's going to protect your original Stang. And it's whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card, which is really nice. I actually really like Galvanic Arc. This one's sweet. Uh, this is a three mana red aura. This is nuts, I think. That's a, when it comes into play, it deals three damage to target creature or player. So every time you make a token copy or enchanted creature has first strike. So it also gets a first strike. But the important thing is the ETB. Yeah. It comes in and can lightning bolt something every time you attack with your Stang, bro Stang Brothers. And let's say the opponent has a six toughness creature. You have Galvanic Arc, hit it for three, and then your Stang has... First strike. So they are not going to block because it just kills their thing. It's huge. Yeah, it's, it and is And you huge. can shoot. Yeah, you can deal damage to it and so they can't block with it. Yeah. yeah. Now, don't forget the tokens get sacrificed. So you also care about auras that like to leave the battlefield. This one, okay. This one's so sweet in this deck. So this is a new, this is a Kamigawa card. It's called One with the Kami. It's three in a green for an enchantment aura with flash. It says enchant creature you control. Yep. Uh, whenever enchanted creature or another modified creature you control dies, Ooh. create X11 one, one colorless spirit creature tokens where X is that creature's power. Wait, so Sting will see his twin die? Yes. Ah. So you get two one with the Kami triggers when all oh, the tokens are yeah, sacrificed. Yeah. So oh that's my at goodness. least six one one spirit right. creature tokens just with Sting without having like a power boost. Right. So you enchant the original Sting, attack, make a token copy, you sacrifice the three, four, both and one with the Kamis, see the sacrifice trigger right. and you make you make six uh, little one ones and if you have buffed his power up anymore you can make a real Way more, a yeah. real uh, lot of, of spirit tokens add in haste add in the second attack step and you are really cooking with Gross. fire pretty good um, pattern of rebirth enchant creature whenever enchanted creature dies that creature's controller may search their library for a creature card put that card on the battlefield and shuffle their library so just free creature tutor with staying every single to time to the battlefield yeah pretty straight to good. the battlefield uh, Bequeathal. Didn't realize this was a real card. Yep. One green. <laughs> if enchanted creature is put into a graveyard, draw two cards. Yeah. So that's just a free card draw at the end. Seems just really, really good. I uh, This one is it, uh, Fruit of the First Tree. For three and a green, uh, it says when enchanted creature dies, you gain X life and draw X cards where X is its toughness. Yeah. So you draw four cards, even if you just sacrifice the regular Stang and you haven't buffed his power, yeah, his see, toughness at all. It's typically, these types of auras you would rarely play in Commander, but because you know you're going to make another Stang that is going to see and die and have all these triggers happens, then they're much, much better. Yeah, I think that's a lot of value. And refilling your hand, so again, in case there's a board wipe or in case there's a removal spell mm -hmm. and you haven't overcommitted with these auras is really important. Yeah, Sticky Fingers too. This is a all-star and limited for new Capenna. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives the creature menace, and then when it deals combat damage, you make a treasure token. But also when the creature dies, you draw a card. So you're just getting a lot of value there. For again, just Place one red mana. 
Um, Mantle of the Wolf is similar. It gives it plus four, plus four. And then when it's put into the graveyard, you create two green, two, two wolf creature tokens. So again, they see there's two of them. Yeah. So I really like this category the most, actually, because I think relying on having like a mirror box out so you can keep your staying twins around or or your, you know, Sundelly and it is it's cute, but you're yeah. most likely staying's going to be dying. So having these extra little bits of, of things here, spe- oh man, it really is going to pull you ahead, I think. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of really cool ETBs that you can do here and dice triggers um, to give you a lot of extra value that wouldn't normally happen because you keep the auras in play, but you yeah. still get the dice trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then if you just care about damage, you can be playing like your Snake Umbras and your Boar Umbras. Uh, Ancestral Mask just gets in for so much damage because it's plus two plus for each enchantment. Colossification, when it enters the battlefield, you tap the enchanted creature, but that's okay because that staying twin is already tapped and attacking and now it's going to be a tw- plus 20 plus 20 pretty that's a that's a big brother that's a <laughs> whoa my brother's huge whoa whoa yeah pretty crazy um <laughs> and then i also like cards like indomitable might mm. so three and a green enchant the creature gets plus three plus three both flash and w- it's may deal it may assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked so yeah. it's just a way to get in for that last bit Push of damage, damage especially with an ancestral mask then you're just killing someone at that turn uh in a deck like this it is incredibly important to protect stang your whole deck relies around you having stang in play so mm-hmm. do not forget uh protection spells like tamio safekeeping to mm-hmm. give stang hexproof and indestructible heroic intervention always goes in decks like this uh, another cool one that came out recently is silk guard oh this is really nice it is a a green instant for x and a green it says put a plus one counter on each of up to x target creatures you control and so you can says, pay x equal to zero by the way yeah and uh this. Auras, equipment, and modified creatures you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Wow. So that gives all of your auras uh, and equipment on Stang hexproof, and also your Stang and the twin. The twin, yeah. Yeah. And, and you, it's great. You can just pay it for a green mana out of nowhere because you don't care about the plus one, plus one counter. All your creatures are already modified. Yeah. Nice. Um, you can also just play like Swiftfoot Boots. Yeah. Lightning Greaves. Protect- Lightning Greaves is a little worse because you can't throw a, sh- a you know can't enchant aura it unless you put the greaves on something else gotta be careful about the shroud yeah yeah um very nice there's and- there's one where we have to mention uh because it's incredible it's chishiro the shattered blade yeah posty played this on our game nights episode and it cares about modified creatures it says whenever an aura or equipment enters the battlefield under your control create a 2-2 red spirit creature token with <laughs> men be making lots of things under the battlefield thanks to staying twin yeah, and then you can put counters on it at the end of a uh, turn, but that that puts a lot of a lot of two two poison to play. Yeah, you also have like Storm Herald in case you just drop a classification into the graveyard, and this attacks. Uh, yeah, so it gives you it gives you a really big attack. Um, and then there's Fecundity, which is whenever a creature die, that creature's controller may draw a card. So again, same Pretty thing good. with Stang dying all the time. So yeah, Pretty. I like Stang a lot. He's so fun, and I like we just haven't seen a commander that makes token enchantments quite like this yeah and even artifacts to that degree I, yeah I'm sure there's a whole route which is just like hey i just want i care about the token things that they're making and i want yeah. to use those but staying we've already out listed a bunch of different ways to play it and i think there's a lot of different options here in terms of building sweet. around yeah. i'm excited to see some stang builds yeah me too i might build one myself for those the next one is tetsuo imperial champion for a blue, a black, and a red, it's a human. It's a legendary human samurai. For it's a three-three. It says whenever Tetsuo attacks, if it's equipped, choose one. The first option is Tetsuo deals damage equal to the highest mana value among equipment attached to it to any target. Okay. The second one is you may cast an instant or sorcery from your hand with mana value less than or equal to the highest mana value among equipments attached to Tetsuo without paying its mana cost. Okay. There's a lot happening here. Tetsuo cares about equipment, though, specifically, and high mana value or just mana value of equipment. Yeah. Uh, when it deals damage, if it's equipped, you can either have him do damage or you can cast instant or sorceries for free, again, based on the mana value of the equipment that's attached to him. So the first question here is, what are the high mana value equipments? What are the highest ones? Yeah, and also recognizing that it's a trap 
to only play high mana value equipments because you just want to get an extra man like one mana two mana whatever it is out of the uh the triggers here but the best card probably is going to be ember cleave ember cleave by a long way yeah so um, it's a flash four red red artifact equipment it costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control and then when it enters the battlefield you automatically attach it to target creature you control and then it gets plus one plus one and has double strike and trample so it's a little interesting because of the timing here you can't have tetsuo attack uh because it says when it attacks if it's equipped you get to choose one so mm-hmm. if you attack and then ember cleave it on to a tetsuo i do not believe it actually sees the ember cleave on him for the attack trigger unless yeah it's already equipped with something smaller yep. like a swift of boots or uh you know yeah exactly a cheaper one yeah which probably is what you're gonna do tetsuo already has equipment and you attack it sees the thing you get to choose one and then you get to ember cleave it out attack it attach it and then say all right i want to cast something for six or less or whatever Mm -hmm. and you can potentially cast it for cheaper based on how you're attacking Uh, argentum armor is another good one uh especially if you're focusing on a on like a free equip uh, uh deck because it is expensive argentum armor is a six mana equipment where equip creature gets plus six plus six and whenever equip creature attacks destroy target permanent okay here's the kicker equip six oof so you really do have to find a way to get around that equipment cost, which is a little tricky in Grixis. Yeah, you don't have white, which is like Sigarda's aid. But yeah. there are some cards, and we'll talk about them a little bit later. Uh, you also have Meteoric Mace. This is four red red. It has Cascade, but it's equip four. It gives a creature plus four, plus zero, and trample. And then you have an interesting non-bow a little bit with like cards like Cauldra Complete and Batter Skull because they do enter the battlefield attached to a germ token. Mm-hmm. And Cauldra Complete costs seven to equip to something else. Batter Skull costs five to equip. So this is basically sucking up your entire turn if you want to do this. So I'm not sure you actually want to go the route where you're like trying to get the max value out of Tetsuo by putting really high mana value stuff on him because it's just going to suck up all your mana and it's you might get blown out. I agree. It's going to be... The more expensive and powerful equipment are, the the more difficult that they use they yeah. are. Yeah. Um, and a res- like a removal spell in response to equipping an Argentum armor is backbreaking. Yeah. Yeah, it um, sucks. So you do have uh, medium mana value equipment, like Moon Silver Spear, Nightmare Lash. So Nightmare Lash I like a lot. Yeah, um, because of the equip cost, right? Exactly. Uh, so Nightmare Lash is a four mana equipment that says equip creature you control gets plus one, plus one for each swamp you control. You're in Grixis, so hopefully, you know, maybe two or three. Uh, and then the equip is pay three life. So... You can cast this the turn, you cast Tetsuo on turn three, Mm -hmm. you cast Nightmare Lash on turn four, and you can equip it for free and attack once Tetsuo does not have... life. Not bad. ...does not have um, uh, Summoning Sickness. Similar to Pact Weapon, this is equip cost of discard a card, and you get to sort of reveal the top card of your library, and you give the creature plus X plus X, and you lose X life where X is the card's mana value. So it could just make your creature really big, but again, does not cost anything to equip. Yeah. Nice. Um, the well, stuff- sorry, it costs a card to equip, but it doesn't cost you mana specifically. Right. Um, and then there's like low mana value equipment. So if you want to play your Swift of Boots, Lightning Greaves, Basilisk Caller, all that stuff. Yeah, if you just want to get some damage in, if you just want to get a trigger, like get a, get a little bit of value, cast a two CMC. Yeah. Uh, so I think the sweet well. spot is between one and three mana. Ideally, you can cast it before you have to cast Tetsuo, so you can just equip it on the turn he can swing. Mm-hmm. Um, but fortunately, free, yes, please. There's lots of spells that you're happy to cast for free that are three mana value and less. All the tutors in these colors, Vampiric Tutor, Mystical Tutor, Gamble, they're all one mana value. So you can just have even the Basilisk Caller or a... Sun Spear. Sun Shadow Spear. There we go. There you go. go. Shadow Spear. (laughs) Sun Shadow Nightmare Spear. Um, You can also cast cards like Brainstorm off of this. Uh, If you have a higher mana value stuff, then you have like Frantic Search or uh, Factor Fiction. Casting Frantic Search for free is pretty good because when it resolves, it untaps up to three lands. Yeah. And then, you know, you got Ponder, Preordain, Opt. You can cast Removal with this as well. Rapid Hybridization, Terminate, Chaos Warp, Reality Shift, Infernal Grasp. 
there's so many different things you can cast uh, in these colors. Your Grixis, it's a spells matter type of combination of stuff. I think that's the sweet spot. You want to figure out what is your average CMC or mana value of your equipment and then not putting in so many like four, five, six drop instants and sorceries thinking you're going to cast them for free. Instead, just knowing that Tetsuo is going to get out there, swing and give you a lot, sort of that small incidental value. Maybe you're casting an extra combat spell as well with it so you can swing twice, cast two things. But I like that sort of as the balance. Seize the Day is a great option in this because uh, it's 4 CMC, so it's a little bit higher, but it's untapped target creature. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. So and it's a flashback for two and in a row. And it has flashback. So it gives you a couple extra combats with Tetsuo, a little bit more value. Yep. Uh, and you can shoot shoot some damage around uh, if yep. you don't have any more instants or sorceries. Um, okay, let's talk about how it gets. Let's say you are you're, you want to put those big mana value equipment onto the battlefield. You can cheat it in in these colors. It's a little bit more difficult, a little more setup, but it works. Yeah, I think Goblin Welder is pretty cool in a deck like this. Uh, Goblin Welder is a Goblin Artificer for red. You can tap it, choose target artifact uh, that you, uh, a player controls and target artifact card in that player's graveyard. If mm-hmm. both targets are still in play, uh, you sacrifice the artifact you control, and you switch it for the one in the graveyard. Yeah, you can also do this to opponents. Let's say they have a really sweet soul ring out. You want to just switch it for some other thing that, like a Lotus Pell or whatever, sucks yeah. comparatively. <laughs> uh, and you can mess with them, but really you want to be using this for your stuff. So you got your Faithless Looting or your Frantic Searches or Wheels. You're yeah. discarding the cards, and then you're Goblin Welding them out. Yeah, you can cheat your uh, the big equipment into play and get that max value out of it if that's the direction that you'd like to go. Yeah, Doretti Scrap Savant does a very similar thing as well. For a minus two, you get a second artifact and bring something back on the battlefield. Um, if you're going that route, uh, I think you're also going to need a way to equip things for free. Because yeah, totally. uh, like our Gentum Armor, some of these equip costs are very high. Ooh. So something I love in this deck is Hammer of Nizan. Great card. It's when the Hammer of Nizan or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach that equipment to target creature you control. So it just auto equips. Mm. And every other equipment that enters the battlefield snaps right on to Tetsuo as well. It gives uh, the equipped creature plus two plus O oh and indestructible. Oh, that's really valuable. Pretty good. Uh, Brass Squire also attaches target equipment you control to target creature you control for freezies. Free! And Magnetic Theft is an instant for one red man that does the same thing. You can also do it to someone else's creature, which I haven't seen happen yet, but it'd be kind of funny. It's like, swing with my sword and feast and famine. I'm like, all right, I'm going to attach that to your thing that's not swinging. <laughs> Block <laughs> and kill it. Get it yeah, out yeah, of Get it out of there. Um, Hilarious. There are good equipment tutors in these colors, so mm-hmm. Godo Bandit Warlord, as we all know, is a combo piece, but it does find yourself an equipment card. Hammer and of Nizan. Hammer of Nizan. That, that 100%. Or just Helm of the Host. Amber Cleave. Yeah. <laughs> Helm of the Host probably, probably cleaner. Uh, there's also <laughs> Anchor to Reality, which you can sack an artifact or creature and you search your library for an equipment or vehicle card and that card gets put on the battlefield, which is nice. And if the equipment has, uh, if the mana value is less than the sacrifice permanent mana value that you get, you can scry to as well, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's like a little tinker for your equipment. Yep. Uh, Dead Eye Quartermaster, same thing. Gets you, lets you find something. Let's find an equipment. Let's you find something. So yeah, uh, Tetsuo seems like it takes a little bit to set up. It seems like it could be really clunky. It's I'm, tough because equi- we've, equipment decks are always tr- tricky, right? Because yeah. you need a balance between equipment and between creatures. And now you also need to balance in these little incidental instants and sorceries as well. Yeah, and you don't want to build too high of a mana value because you're never going to get be able to cast them, but you also don't want to get blown out. So you want to figure out, you know, what are you doing? Are you tutoring? Are you getting value from your preordains and stuff? Or are you just trying to cast something kind of cool for three mana? Who knows? Or are you just shooting them in the face? I like the damage. I like that too. Always good. But market difference in terms of our excitement compared from Tetsuo to Stang. It's tough. There's a lot going on on Tetsuo. Yeah. And Stang is just, there's just a lot more you can do with auras. I think that doesn't lead you to these awkward like, uh uh-oh, but what if someone casts a removal spell? Equipment without white is just really tough. You don't have a lot of the free equip. You don't have a lot of the yeah. payoffs. It's um, it's it's going to be an uphill battle, I think, yep. uh, doing that. Yep. And anytime that's attached to an attack trigger or kind of a damage trigger, it just adds that extra layer of difficult to build around. But we'd like to see all try if you want to. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next creature. This is the ever-changing Dane. 
Pretty sweet. A white, blue, black for a 3-3 shapeshifter. And you can pay one mana to sacrifice another creature. And the ever-changing Dane becomes a copy of the sacrificed creature, except it has this ability. So it bears comparison to a lot of other cards in the past. Lazav the Multifarious, Marisil the Pretender, Vesuvian Doppelganger all have this sort of thing where it's like, do something and keep the ability and keep yeah. doing it. It's, it turns your it turns your commander into usually a non legendary or some some like Lazav you always do the turn it into a twelve twelve for right. one mana thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I like this build in terms of the death triggers because you're going to be sacrificing creatures. You don't want to be sacrificing just nothing and changing the Dane into something that doesn't matter. You want to sacrifice a creature that when it dies it does something. So Tesa Karlov is sort of the de facto. Uh, Pan Death Harmonicon. If a creature right. dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control the trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Yeah, so this is going to look very similar to Tesa Karlov's uh, decks that have been built in the past, but you get the added benefits of some blue cards, which oh, is yeah. pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, you have all in these colors, you have the three dragons from Kamigawa. You got Junji, Kega, and Ao. Ao. <laughs> 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 Notably, I think old Kaiga is better than the new Kaiga. When, yeah, I would agree. When old Kaiga dies, he you gain control of target creatures. So what I think is cool about this is you cast Kaiga, you sack it with the Dane, and then you get the Kaiga death trigger. And right. then if, if the Dane dies, you get another Kaiga death trigger. And if Tase is out, you get four total Kaiga death triggers. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Very Pretty nuts. cool. Um, new commander I've been thinking about building around is Lisa, Forgotten Archangel. It is a bunch of mana for a creature that says, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. And if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. So this is a way for you to be like, every changing day, sack, kill that thing, get the trigger, return it to my hand, do it again. Cast it again. It's pretty Cast cool. Cast it again. Yeah, and similar very much to both of the Athreuses, Athreus, mm -hmm. God of Passage, and Shroud Veiled, are just ways, again, to just get those sacrificed creatures back and continue that chain going. Oh, yeah, Maybe. this card. Do the full attendant. Very simple card. It's a common two in the black. When it dies, return another target creature from your graveyard to your hand. So very easy thing to sacrifice for the ever-changing Dane. You're happy to do it. Um, and you don't necessarily care about the Dane dying because you're going to be able to get stuff back, which is nice. Right. There's there's a lot of sweet dice triggers that you can get here, and and dutiful attendant lets you s sort of keep looping those. Mm -hmm. I like Alenda the Dusk Rose in here. Creatures are dying. Whenever another creature dies, you put a counter on her, mm. and then when Alenda dies, uh, you make that many vampire tokens uh, with lifelink, where X is Alenda's power. So yeah, you can sacrifice Alenda when she gets big enough, and then keep building up a new Alenda to make more vampire tokens. That's nice. Kind of fun. Yeah. Worm Coil Engine. Also, you love to see it die because it. Makes Makes two three threes, one with life link and one with death touch. And, and you still have a copy worm coil engine to spare. Oh, that's right, because, because yeah, Dane is because Dane is your worm coil engine. engine. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Pretty cool. Uh, I could totally see you playing the scarab god in this deck because you're able to exile cards from graveyard to make them copies. Uh, or sorry, you got to create tokens that are copies. So scarab god seems very good once yeah. you're putting stuff in the bin. So yeah, you can use. I, I like Scarab God a lot in this deck because you can use Scarab God to make token copies of stuff you've already sacrificed that you can sacrifice again to Dane, yeah. get even more death triggers. Oh, but right, you could right. even sacrifice Scarab God to turn to give Dane the Scarab God clause when the Scarab God dies, return oh. it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So you could sacrifice Scarab God, you put it back into your hand at the next end step because it died, but then now if like if there's a board wipe on the stack or something, right. Dane now Dane that. goes back to your hand as well so you can get a little bit of protection on your commander if, in case you have to recast it and just having a scarab god out if you've ever played against this card pretty good it's very good yeah especially if you got a lot of mana it becomes backbreaking really quickly yeah um, another card, it's interesting, Sinister Concierge is one in blue for a 2-1. It's a new card. When a Sinister Concierge dies, you may exile it and put three time counters on it. If you do, exile up to one target creature and put three time counters on it. Each card exiled this way that doesn't have suspend gains suspend. So when this dies, you get to basically exile another creature for a full three turns. Forever. Forever, yeah. It feels like yeah. forever. I cast <laughs> suspend on one of Vinny's cards in the recent extra turns, and I was like, you'll get it back. He never got it back. No. Um, so that's kind of cool. And then you get that again. This is what makes people not want to even get rid of Dane because he will just... He'll be a sinister concierge now. Yeah, exactly. The hotel staff taken over. 
<laughs> and then there's Aura Thief, which is just a creature that when it dies uh, or put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you gain control of all enchantments. This is pretty good. I don't know. I, a lot of the time when you do dies decks, you don't get blue. So yeah. it's cool that you get to add Aura Thief in there and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you have a free sack outlet in the zone to take advantage. In the zone. Um, and of course, I think in these colors, you might want to steal your opponent's creatures. Mr. Steal Your Creatures, it's Dane. And then when you steal them, you want to sack them so that you get the creature dead. But it's kind of like a removal spell and mm -hmm. you get the creature for as long as you need it. That's pretty slick. Yeah, so there's Control Magic, Chamber of Manipulation, guys, you do with a bunch, Domineering Will. I actually like Domineering Will a lot. Mm -hmm. So there's three in the blue for an instant. It says target player gains control of up to three target non-attacking creatures until end of turn. Untap those creatures. They block this turn if able. This card was originally designed sort of to be like, oh, they're attacking. You know what? I'm going to grab these creatures and they're not attacking. I'm going to have them block instead for me when someone's attacking me. But mm -hmm. you can cast this at any time. Yeah, just yoink three creatures. As and long as they're not them. attacking. Yeah, you <laughs> just yoink three creatures for four mana. That's a absurd rate. Yeah, and if you have a little bit of extra mana, you can sack them to Dane and keep the best one for yourself. I don't know. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, of course, good. anytime you're sacrificing uh, creatures, especially non-token creatures for value, you want some way to bring them back. And white is great at this. So a spells like brought back, which returns two target permanents from your gra graveyard to the battlefield that were put there this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, Savin's Reclamation is a classic. Yeah, you played that card in game nights. I did. Not very well. Uh, but you played it. <laughs> I sure did cast it. Yeah. Uh, and Luminous Broodmoth, whenever a creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it instead That's so you get great. to keep using these dies dies triggers with luminous broodmoth on. and it's not about like doing it infinite times just getting a couple of these dies triggers twice with luminous broodmoth could be enough they're right? powerful you're only supposed to get dies triggers once yeah exactly <laughs> so warm coil engine luminous broodmoth sack it you get three three two three threes it comes back with flying someone's going to try and remove that thing. Otherwise, if you really need to, you can sack it again, right? So there's just so mm -hmm. much value to be generated with Luminous Broodmoth. And we'll talk about that card later as well. This um, is a weirdo that I've been trying to put in a deck forever. Yeah, again, another card I've never seen before. This so. is Dreams of the Dead. It is a blue enchantment for three and a blue that has an activated ability that says one and a blue return target white or black creature card from your graveyard to play. That creature gains cumulative upkeep two. If the creature would leave play, remove it from the game instead. Okay, this is actually really good. It's insane in this deck. Because you you don't care. You're, you've are you already sacked. Maybe it's come back once already because of Luminous Broodmoth. Yes. But now you just want it back one last time. One more go around for the Dane to change into it. And then it gets exiled, but you got it back for two mana? Yeah. So you you can activate this as many times as you'd like wow. per turn. So if you pay one and a blue, you return Ow to the battlefield. Sacrifice Ooh. Ow, get a dice trigger. And then, you have an, your, and then your commander is, Good. is yeah, still yeah. an AO. Or but at that point, you don't care. You could just keep bringing other stuff back. And yeah. every changing Dane just acts as a sack outlet you don't even need the dane in this case you could just have dreams of the dead in a sack outlet and you're already doing the thing with the dice triggers doing pretty good yeah doing pretty good uh, i think that this card's really sweet in this deck yeah and then you've also got cards like abnormal endurance which is one of those black spells that when a creature dies it comes back to the battlefield corpse dance you can return the top creature of your graveyard to the battlefield and then dance of the mance i thought was interesting because you have the colors we have the colors, right? White and black. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> X, white, and black for a sorcery. Uh, white and blue, sorry, for a sorcery. Return up to X target artifact and or non-aura enchantment cards with each mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more, then those permanents are four, four creatures in addition to their other types. So you could have a build of this deck that's all about those artifact creatures and, or just artifacts and non-aura enchantments. Mm. And if you make Dance of the Man's big enough, you've got all this sack fodder as well. So I think there's a lot of interesting things you could be doing here. Turn them into an enchantment. Yeah. Because they're four four creatures in addition, you could turn Dane into a Ristic Study. Hey, I'm down with that. Neat, neat. Oh. <laughs> okay, we have five more amazing, excellent legendary creatures on the way, including one that we both might think is the strongest out of the entire set so far. But before we get into it, let's hear a quick break and message from our mineral sponsors. Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Well, well, well. Looks like you're in a bind, and only one card in your entire deck might save you. I, Demonic Tutor, <clears throat> am here to help you. In a game of magic, I can find whatever answer you need. Sadly, beyond the game, cardboard can't fix everything. That's where BetterHelp Online Therapy comes in. 
Speaking with a therapist can help you stop fixating on problems by teaching you to work towards solutions and become a better problem solver. For me, speaking with my therapist, Greg, helped me overcome my anxiety with public speaking. Now, I'm not just a private tutor. I'm an adjunct demonology professor at Seven Hells Technical College. Just fill out a brief survey and BetterHelp will search their deck of qualified therapists to find your perfect match. And you can switch at any time. It's convenient, entirely online, and affordable. It certainly won't cost you your immortal soul like I do. <laughs> Wait, I just cost two mana? Well, that seems broken. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash command zone today to get 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash command zone. Avast me hearties, the name's Zara, renegade recruiter, and I'm looking to grow me pirate crew. For years I searched me opponent's measly hands and found only scurvy dogs. But then I started using Indeed, the hiring partner that lets you attract, interview, and hire all in one place. It'd be the only job site where you're guaranteed to find candidates that meet your must-have requirements. Or you don't pay a doubloon! Indeed is your first mate at every step of the hiring process, helping to find great talent while saving time with tools like virtual interviews. Plus, there's my favorite part of Indeed, assessments. With Indeed assessments, I know that candidates have already proven their mettle before the interview. By choosing from over a hundred skill tests to add to a job post, I can select for only me true perfect crewmates. With Indeed, I have a treasure map to the grandest booty of all, qualified enthusiastic employees. Yar! Indeed's doing something no other job site has done. Now with Indeed, businesses only pay for quality applications matching the sponsored job description. Visit Indeed.com slash command zone to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash command zone. Again, Indeed.com slash command zone. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hello, I'm Dryad of the Elysian Grove, here to talk to you about Me Undies, the comfortable underwear company that's taking the internet by storm. Now me, I never wear underwear. I like to feel the breeze on my vines. But when the open air gets nippy, I snuggle up with Me Undies' collection of clothes and accessories. That's right, Me Undies makes more than just underwear. They've got durable, cushy socks that make my feet sing. Just call me Dryad of the Elysian Groove, baby. Plus, they're super stretchy loungewear. Daily tees, shorts, and even rompers to add some silky softness to every phase of the day. Look, I even got this Catwoman hoodie for my dog. <laughs> like a tree, his bark is worse than his bite. Because trees don't bite, unless you ask nicely. Wink. And everything's available in sizes extra small through 4XL with tons of prints and more colors than I let your lands produce. So make like a me and leaf discomfort behind with soft and sustainable me undies. MeUndies has a great offer for fans of the Command Zone. For any first-time purchasers, you get 20% off plus free shipping and returns. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash command. Again, that's MeUndies.com slash command. All right, welcome back, everyone, to the Box Topper Part 2 Reviews. It's me, Jimmy Wong, your boy, as well as Rachel Reeks, ya girl. Not yet your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. So, someday, oh. <laughs> Don't give the viewers hope. All right, let's move on to the Lady of Otaria. This is three a red and a green for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature avatar. You may tap three untapped dwarves you control rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Okay. And at the beginning of each end step, if a land you controlled was put into a graveyard from the battlefield this turn, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put any number of dwarf cards from among them into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order order pretty cool yeah so every single end step should you use an orb land or just have a fetch land out you can get basically a lot of cards you're looking at top four cards you may potentially draw one two maybe even three cards off yeah, it depending on how dedicated to the dwarf clan you are yeah i hope so because there are only 48 playable dwarf yeah. gruel <laughs> it is worth noting with lady of otaria uh she has an alternate casting cost you may tap three untapped dwarves you control rather than play the spell's mana cost that does not include commander tax oh uh, with, okay with these um the replacement cost ones you still have to pay the additional right. costs and if you, it dies you can play seven dwarves seven times that is an additional thing that you can do here if pretty you're fully dedicated to the dwarfs cool um best card in the deck 
It's Magda. Always. Yeah. So Magda already wants dwarves to be tapped when they do the create treasure tokens. Should you go turn two Magda, turn three dwarf, turn four, or turn three two dwarves or whatever, then Lady Votari comes out and you make three treasures on top. That's pretty darn good. Magda, one of the best dwarves out there, but there are some really good ones, actually. Stormkiln Artist is an extremely strong dwarf. If Did you've not got, even know it was a dwarf. Now if, I do. Yeah. I mean, if you've got some instants and sorceries in that deck as well, it's mm-hmm. c- like a rampant growth or that kind of thing. You're in oh, gruel. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Uh, Torbran is also a dwarf for one red red. He's a dwarf noble. If a one red, red source. Red, red. One red red red. A lot of red. Excuse me. Four, four mana. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls it deals that much damage plus two instead and if you're playing a dwarf deck and they're just trying to swing with dwarves that might be a good thing because you need that extra damage yeah get a little extra buff I like this card from AFR quite a bit. Plundering Barbarian, two in a red for a Dwarf Barbarian. When it enters the battlefield, you can choose one. You can either destroy target artifact or just make a treasure token. That's a solid dwarf. Very solid. I think he's a doable dwarf. There's a new one from Baldur's Gate that's also pretty good. Uh, This is Druid of the Emerald Grove. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for up to two basic land cards and reveal them, then roll a d20. Uh, Sometimes you put them into your hand. Sometimes you put them into the battlefield. Depends on how well you roll. Yeah. But it's like a little cultivate sort of on a guy. Yeah, to cultivate, it's a 50-50 chance that you're going to get generally the cultivate ability, which is mm-hmm. one on the battlefield, one in your hand. But even just, it's just a dwarf. And yeah. dwarves are good in this deck. Yeah, you got to dwar- draw them. You got to draw them. You got to draw them. Draw em. As always, changelings are also dwarves. So Maskwood Nexus makes a bunch of dwarves as tokens, and it makes all your creatures into dwarves because they're all changelings now. And you got... Like we mentioned last time, Torian Mauler, um, Realm Walker, very good card. Realm in this Walker deck. is a very good one. So this one lets you look at the top of your library, which is important. You can tell if there's a dwarf in there. Yeah, for uh, the ability of your commander. <laughs> uh, and then you may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. So notably choosing dwarf. Uh, Masked Vandal is another very good green dwarf oh, or yeah. changeling. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, we may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, exile target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. All right, now, let's talk about lands into the graveyard on each end step. So, mm-hmm. I think you'd want to utilize this part as much as possible. It's what's really going to get you ahead, especially if you're a dwarf strategy, because that doesn't mean you're doing too much. <laughs> yeah. So, you're going to need a lot of different ways to get lands in the graveyard, and I think you can even do things where you play a bunch of lands and save up the fetch land activation so they can yeah. draw up to four extra times you know per rotation which is 16 cards that's a ton that's, yeah that's really looking if you're your drawing deck. 16 straight dwarves that's amazing <laughs> you, whoa but you, you are looking at 16 cards potentially yes yes so, you're seeing 16 cards i think you're gonna play a lot of fetch lands so wooded foothills all the traditional ones as well as your evolving wilds and terramorphic expanses uh, you also have all of the ways to sacrifice lands at instant speed so harrow Roiling regrowth and crop rotation are all really great ways to sack lands and then get more lands on the battlefield. So you're ramping, but you're also going to get that additional trigger, which right. is really nice. Uh, your Spring Bloom Druid does the same at sorcery speed. Elvish Reclaimer uh, can sacrifice a land and go get a land into play as well. Yep. And I think you want to replay a bunch of lands. So Crucible of Worlds, Ramming Up Excavator, Ancient Green Warden are all ways to replay those lands out of your graveyard. And because you want to get multiple fetch lands out at the same time, so you can crack them all in one rotation, you got to play your Azusas as well, or your Dried of the Elysian Grove. Explore. Give yourself, yeah, some extra land drops. Yeah, and I actually really like keeping the lands usable. So Yava Maya, Cradle of Growth, makes each land a forest in addition to its other types. So it means that your fetch lands aren't just useless. Should you really need to use them, you can still play them and decide, okay, do I need to hold this up to activate it and do the ability, or do I just want to tap it as a forest? Kind of nice. Sure, yeah, that's that's a cool idea. I like that a lot. Uh, and then Amulet of Vigor is a card that I'm always really high on because all of your tapped lands come into play untapped. So your Terramorphic Expanse is better Pretty than it was good. before. All right, Lady Otaria, good job. The dwarves love you. <laughs> There's a new Snow, Snow White in town. Yeah, Lady o- the Lady Otaria and the 48 dwarves does not have quite the same ring. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's move on to the next commander. This is Tobias, Doomed Conqueror, also known as the card I'm least excited about. Sorry to spoil it. Poor Tobias. I know, he is truly doomed. doing his best. Two white and a blue for a (laughs) 3-2 human soldier with flash. When Tobias dies, for each non-token creature you control that died this turn, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. It's a lot of setup to make us some tutus. It's tough. Including you, your commander dying. 
it, yeah, you want you want a wide board out of non-token creatures, and then a board wipe in white blue. Yeah. The board wipe part not so hard. Yeah, so. If, if you're playing Tobias, we, I think you're still trying to take as much advantage of the creating a token ability as possible. So it's, you, yeah, for sure. You still want your Anointed Processions, Divine Visitation, uh, turning those tokens into a better body or into more bodies mm-hmm. is going to be important to make Tobias act, really make an impact. Yeah, and you really have to use Tobias, I think, more than once. So we're back to the recursion strategies we talked about earlier, which is brought back, Savin's Reclamation, Luminous Broodmoth, Cosmic intervention Mm -hmm. ascend from avernus so this is a new one Uh, yeah i like this one it's a sorcery that is x white 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 return all creatures and planeswalker cards with mana value x or less from your graveyard to the battlefield exile ascend from avernus so this lets you get all of those non-token creatures that died in the first board wipe back to the battlefield and hopefully you can reuse Dane's ability? Yeah, it's kind of annoying because Tobias wants non-tokens. You can't exchange tokens for tokens. You can't turn a 1-1 soldier into a 2-2 zombie. It has to be real creatures. Yeah. So you need to include this whole package in there. Cauldron of Souls is a great way to bring them back. So you have a bunch of creatures, you give them persist, uh, and then they come back with minus one, minus one counters. But hey, at but they're least... still non-tokens. Yeah, and they get to be there, and they get to mm-hmm. die again and make more, uh, should you want to go through there. This is a neat include. Antler Skulkin? Mm. It is a five mana, three, three scarecrow, and has an activated ability that says two colon. Target white creature gains persist until end of turn. So it's sort of a cauldron of souls that you, that you have to pay to activate, but right. you can give it to your commander. You can give it to a non-token creature that's important that you keep around yeah. after a board wipe. Uh, it's pretty neat. And the art is gnarly. Super gnarly. Nim Death Mantle does, again, a similar thing. Allows when the non-token creature is put into the graveyard, you can pay four and returns to the battlefield and you get Nim Death Mantle on top of it. Um, there is a rules note here between Breathkeeper Seraph, which is a card that soul bonds, and if one is paired with another creature, each of those creatures has, when the creature dies, you may return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of your next end upkeep, and then Gift of Immortality, which also I think is pretty good in this deck. It's an enchantment aura. When enchanted creatures dies, put that card, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control, and then you return Gift of Immortality to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of the next end step. These should work if, if you soul bond with your commander. Yeah, right? because, you- yeah, Breathkeeper is returning at the beginning of the upkeep, and then Gift of Immortality comes back later, so you should be able to just keep it going? Just sort of sack them over and over again with like an altar. Right. I think if you're going to maximize value out of this, it's not going to be in response to a board wipe. It's going to be using you doing sack it yourself. outlets yeah. to loop ETB triggers on non-token creatures. So something that keeps bringing stuff back like Breathkeeper Seraph or Gift of Immortality is going right. to be really important. But so are those sack outlets. Yeah, you need to be able to sack at the moment you need to do it. Otherwise, mm. you're really not getting the max value of this card, right? Yeah, so something... Uh, I think Altar of Dementia is particularly good in this deck because you're making, you're going to be sacrificing so many creatures and so many zombies that hopefully you can generate enough value to mill somebody oh, out. Okay, yeah. Uh, or, you know, use one of the recursion pieces that we talked about before to right. return stuff to the battlefield. Maybe you can play a coat of arms with that and then make all of your zombies massive. There, there you go. That's a cool idea. And sack of all to Altar of Dementia and Yeah, kill you. and mill Josh out. Uh, classic uh, altars that you know and love is Ashnod's altar is two colorless mana for Xian altar as well. No, no, those are... Th- oh, yeah, it gives you two colorless mana. Gives you two colorless mana, three. and yeah. for Xian altar, that sacks to add, add colored mana. Yeah, you also have, like, Animal Boneyard, which enchants the land to let you sack stuff. Baron, Pretty Master cool. Wizard, which uh, sacks a permanent to return the creature to its owner's hand. So that's nice. You can even sack, like, a land or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Blasting Station untaps and allows you to sack a bunch of things, because whenever a creature comes into play, you untap Blasting Station station pretty good um caregiver as well as martyr's cause allow you to sack creatures to prevent damage so it seems martyr's pretty good cause too. is pretty underrated i think sacking a creature to prevent all damage to target creature or player from one source that mm-hmm. prevents that prevents a lot of issues yeah saves you from a, a blasphemous act or something like that or maybe a Giant Blightsteel Colossus. Yeah, that that is certainly a source. <laughs> That's a source, all right. Uh, and then dies triggers again. We want creatures that, when they die, give you some benefit. Mm-hmm. We got Solemn Simulacrum, Worm Coil Engine. Maybe put Skull Clamp in this deck just to draw a bunch of cards. Yeah. You got Kega again and AO and 
all the cavaliers that fit in these colors. The cavaliers are cool in this deck because they have both ETB and dies triggers, yep. and I think you're going to want to be doing both. So they come back and you get their ETB trigger, and then when they die and you bring them back again, it's like twice as much value as other cards. Yeah. So there's Cavalier of Gales that comes in and you brainstorm. You draw three cards, then put two cards on your hand on top of your library in any order. And when it dies, you shuffle it into its owner li- library and then scry two. I yep. forgot about the shuffle on that one, but all right. It's uh, okay. It Maybe you'll draw it again later on. Maybe you'll get him. Uh, and Cavalier of Dawn is awesome. When it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. Its controller makes a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature token. And when it dies, you return target artifact or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. But you don't need to shuffle it. It doesn't. You don't have to shuffle it, which is pretty good. But uh, you get a removal spell on the way in and a recursion spell on the way out. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, pretty cool. Okay, I am kind of over this commander, though. I don't think it's very great. It requires a lot of hoops and stuff to build around it. Um, it feels like there has to be a better way to, to do what you want. Like Dane, yeah. like the ever-changing Dane, Dane, Dane is yeah, doing a similar thing. And it gives you another color. So yes. maybe this card belongs in that deck. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? All right. Moving on, the next card is Torwaki the Younger. We're familiar with this card. Oh, I'm absurdly familiar with this card. <laughs> Josh played it to great effect on the last game night. Um, a lot of people were considering this just one of the strongest commanders printed in a long time, even though it's a five-man commander. And an uncommon one at that. Yeah, exactly. So this card is actually just nuts. So, Rachel, you want to read it? Yeah, Torwaki the Younger for three black and a red. This is a human archer. It is a 3-3. Three, three. It is reach and lifelink. Why lifelink? Why lifelink? Link. Why lifelink? If another source you control would deal non-combat damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage plus one to that permanent or player instead. Mm. Pretty good. Uh, but it continues. Whenever you cast <laughs> an instant or sorcery spell, Torwaki the Younger deals two damage to any target, namely our faces. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes in the form of Invect. So <laughs> I can't believe this is an uncommon, but I guess it's a box topper, so they're all kind of rare. But yeah. this is just a very powerful card. Uh, five mana does cost a lot. This deck asks you to cast instants and sorceries, uh, and there are a lot of cards in red and black that care about that. They ping, they they play very well with you casting instants and sorceries, mm-hmm. like Electrostatic Field or Firebrand Archer. If you want to stay on the Archer sub theme, yeah, yeah, um, every two t- Archer sub theme in red. Yeah, so <laughs> Electrostatic Fields when you cast instant sorcery, it deals one damage to each opponent, which turns into two damage to each opponent. And Firebrand Archer is very similar. So those are just ways. Uh, yep. Like gutter snipe gutter as well. Snipe you just sit snipe. there and yeah. kill everyone by just casting instance of sorceries. Yeah, you're going to want a lot of those storm uh, payoff cards like Storm Kill an Artist, which we saw uh, operate to great effect. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. Yeah, and then if you're making the spells cheaper with Nightscape Familiar or you're getting mana back with cards like Runaway Steamkin, and you can also get a bunch of mana from cards like Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Jessica's Will, Mana Geyser. So now you have all this mana, you have all these cards in your hand, and you have all of these ways to deal damage thanks to Torwaki. And you get a payoff in the command zone. You do what Josh did in the episode. You're playing cards like Accelerate. uh, You're playing cards like Aphotic Wisps, Light at the Stage, Needle Drop. These all potentially cost one mana. They Mm -hmm. draw you a card, and they will deal damage to people. Or they'll draw you some cards. These cheap cards that cantrip are really important because it means you always have gas to trigger him again, and you always have mana to keep moving, right? So um, even something that seems kind of minor, like Needle Drop, all you really want is the Incident and Sorcery. But it's actually pretty good because it deals deals two two damage damage instead of one. So it's a shock that cantrips. I mean, I died to this card, so. Yeah, you did. Um... But yeah, cheap draw spells is going to be the way this deck wants to yeah. live. So a lot of cantrips, you're going to yeah. storm off, play a bunch of stuff, fire a bunch of little arrows over and over and mm-hmm. over again. Um, there's also, you know, you want to keep going. So Knight's Whisper, Sign and Blood, and Valakut Awakening are all pretty affordable ways to just fill your hand back up, keep that chain going, and just keep hitting people over and over and over again. Um, because you are pinging, Death Touch is always good. It turns that two damage to any target into a lethal damage on any creature. Yep. So equipment like Basilisk Collar or Gorgon's Head give the equipped creature Death Touch. A t- kind of a cute one is Vorpal Sword. Yeah. Uh, for a single black equipped creature gets plus two plus oh and has Death Touch and then has an activated ability that is very expensive. Eight mana, five black, black, black. Until end of turn, Vorpal Sword gains whenever equipped creature deals combat damage. So you do have to to attack to a player that player loses the game but it's not that unheard of with torwaki to find to ways to 
clear out someone's entire board because it's crack any through. target. Yeah, and just crack through with the Vorpal Sword hit. That's a it's, very flavorful win, indeed. Yeah, and while while Death Touch is while we're talking about Death Touch, uh, Pestilent Spirit I think is kind of cool. There was a lot of like little damage uh, mm-hmm. uh, cards that like Needle Drop, like Needle Drop. So this is a Spirit for two and a black. It has menace and death touch. And it also says instant and sorcery spells you control have death touch. Yeah, so even your lightning bolt or your shocks all now kill creatures. It's all enough. It's kind of a yeah. kind of a neat place for that card. In fact, you may already be dead. People love this animation. In it was amazing. Minutes. It was so good. And this yeah. card is incredible in this deck. Yeah, one black mana, instant destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn, and you draw a card. Most important part, refill that hand. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Blade Brand. Target creature gains death touch until end of turn. Draw a card. That target would be Torwaki. Yeah, or even some other card. It doesn't matter, right? Because Torwaki already d- doesn't need death touch if he's already got with Basil's Caller. Doesn't, yeah, that's target, true. I- I've seen this happen. You're just like, I'm going to cantrip. I'll just target something over there. Yeah, it's going to die anyway, yeah. Touch of Moonglove is the same thing um it's a little bit extra though so true touch of moon Glo- moon glove is a, an instant for a single black that says target creature you control gets plus one plus oh and gains death touch until end of turn great whenever a creature dealt damage by that creature dies this turn its controller loses two life Ooh. so if you're storming off and you're just killing someone's and whole board you just kill five creatures with torwaki you also drain them for 10 for your trouble walkie 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 <laughs> It seems good. Uh, cut to ribbons as well. It's a Always card with aftermath good. where you can cast it to deal four damage to target creature, and then you can aftermath it to make each opponent lose X life. So Torwaki, I think, has needs. As we saw in the episode too, needs a way to finish players off. Mm-hmm. Um, and so ribbons. I've died to ribbons more than I should, oof. honestly. Well, fortunately, Overwalkie, it's overkill time. So you got cards like Torbrand, Fame and Redfell, Smoldering Egg, which is an interesting one. It's one in the red for a creature. Defender, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you put a number of ember counters on Smoldering Egg equal to the amount of mana spent to cast a spell. Then if it has seven or more ember counters, you remove them and transform it into a dragon. That's a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, Ashmouth Dragon deals two damage to any target. So, so just doubles up your triggers on Torwaki. Yeah. And uh, then once you get them flipped into a dragon. Maybe because Torwaki, again, has lifelink. What the heck? You can play Sanguine Bond. You can do the whole combo there should you want to. Yeah. Um, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Yeah. Repercussion is really interesting. Whenever creatures dealt cool. damage, it deals that much damage to that creature's controller. That means you can take all those Torwaki triggers, just point them at creatures, and do double duty on that damage. Yeah. So take a creature out and deal as much damage to their player's face. Yeah. So let's say I'm at like a healthy 40 with a bunch of 1-1s. You kill all my 1-1s. I'm now all of a sudden down to 20 with no board. That leaves me within striking distance of just dying. Pretty brutal. So something I that's interesting in the 99 of this deck is Crook the Thumbless. Yeah, this is funny. Torwaki is a cast trigger. Yeah. So Crook says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, return that spell to its owner's hand. If you win the flip, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. You kind of want to lose you the... You kind of want to lose the flip because you're, all of your creature, all of your spells can trip. Yikes. And it means that you can just cast it again and you aren't down a card. In fact, a lot of the time, because all of your little one drops draw cards, yeah. you draw another card. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I... I like Crook the Thumbless in this deck because it, it doubles up your triggers, and uh, even if you know you you double your spell, you double you your fun, du- you get double your spell, double mint gum. So I think I think Crook's kind of cool in the ninety nine of this deck. Yeah, and of course you could also just put Infect in there and oh. just go to town. Oh yeah, that's how I died. Ten damage is enough. Spoiler and it's a alert: a lot less than 40. forty. Yeah, and there's ways again just to combo off. Even on other players' turns, because you have a lot of instants and stuff in the deck. Um, cool. Don't forget, you can also just check out that Game Nights episode and see Josh's deck list. Uh, yeah. A lot of people were inspired by that. And I think the deck is actually really fun and really interesting to build. It's really powerful. I mean, having a storm payoff in the command zone is uh, is is really strong. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, moving on to... a big one. Yeah, it's... It, the, it, Torsten, no. founder of Benalia. It's the founder! I don't know. It, it sounds like one of those elementary school names that are all like, here, <laughs> Torsten. <laughs> Zafrin. I want to be called the founder of Benalia. Founder but, of yeah. Benalia. Imagine Tor- if we all had subtitles. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> you know, right now, everything's about like, what's your name? What's right? Like, what do you go by? What do you identify as? I want titles added onto that. Get founder of Command Zone. Right? I want, when the next time I'm hosting something to come on, it's Jimmy Wong, founder of, maybe not even the Command Zone, something completely made up. 
Yeah. Okay, I mean, cool. like Benalia. <laughs> like Benalia, yeah. That's a real place. This is a uh, Selesnia commander. It's five, a green, and a white for a 7-7 seven, seven human soldier. All right, 7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Chonky. Chonky. Uh, when Torsten enters the battlefield, reveal the top seven cards of your library. Put any number of creature and or land cards from among them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Any number. Of, of creatures and lands. If, you're, if your deck is only creatures and lands, you, you draw, draw seven. seven cards, yeah. play You pay seven mana to draw seven cards. And it's air in the battlefield, so it Seems it's pretty good. Better than Damia, almost. Uh, and when Torsten dies, create seven, one, one white soldier creature tokens. A lot of sevens. Mm, yeah, not as exciting on that half. Okay, so... ETB definitely feels like what we're building around on this one. A oh, 100%. It's, once you have this card on the battlefield... I mean, you can blink it every turn. You can mm-hmm. just draw, 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 draw. And you may not even need to do this more than twice because you're just going to have an, an additional 10, whatever, 14 cards in your hand at that point. Right. I, I really think you build with as much creature and land density as possible. Like, I don't even know if you... like. Oh. It has to be a very powerful non-creature spell. To yeah, maybe like you. a path to exile or something, but... Yeah, I mean, like a conjurer's closet... Yeah, so you can, can get blink flicking, him, maybe. flickering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's tough because uh, drawing those cards is uh, is very powerful. Yeah, so I think the goal here is you play as many cards as you can to get to seven mana ASAP because you want to sure. empty your hand because Torsten's just going to fill it right back up. Yeah. So every single mana dork, Lanoir Elves, Elvish Mystic, Birds of Paradise, Finhorn Elves, Arbor Elf, right? Just play all of them, get mm-hmm. to seven mana as quickly as possible, and then you can just refill your hand. You can slam your commander and draw a fresh seven. There's lots yeah. of little uh, creatures, which I think makes a lot of sense if you're going to be drawing a ton of cards. Yeah, so you can play them that same you turn. You just want to dump them out of your hand when you flicker Torsten. So things like Esper Sentinel, Mother of Runes, mm. uh, Spore Frog, Weathered Wayfarer. Um, Allosaurus Shepherd, pretty good. Alishore Shepherd is great because it turns your little creatures into a threat at the end of the game. Uh, and it does not allow players to counter your Torsten. That too. It says uh, this spell can't be countered and green spells you control can't be countered. And that has an activated ability that says four green green until end of turn. Each elf creature you control has base power and toughness 5-5 five, five, and becomes a dinosaur in addition to its other types. So you, you can take all those land elves mm-hmm. and elvish mystics and all of those and turn them all into dinos and trample over for it. Well, elves on top of dinos I think is the flavor specific are they it doesn't addition, transform elves addition. okay so they just a, a dinosaur appears beneath them yeah they're shepherding him the allosaurus sure yeah that like, makes hey, sense that makes sense catch a ride on a dinosaur <laughs> um like it's a carnival ride <laughs> yeah exactly it's, it's infinity we're back there pretty good um yeah, flickering Torsten seems like the way to just overkill in terms of just getting everything. Like, ephemerate. One mana, exiles her creature control, return to the battlefield under its owner's control, and rebound so you can cast it again mm-hmm. on your next upkeep. This could potentially be a one mana draw 14. 14? Pretty not, good. Not too crazy. However, ephemerate is an instant. So, so you are cutting down, cutting down your, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but there are flicker effects that are based on creatures, right? Yep, so that's totally. like uh, Felidar Guardian is a great answer to this. It enters the battlefield. You may exile target yep. permanent you control and then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Restoration uh, Angel does the same thing. One. Charming Prince, Flicker Wisp. Um, and then if you want to go the non-creature route, you got Sword of Hearth and Home. Hearth and Home. This card's great. It also Ca- helps get you to seven. That's right. Conjurer's Closet allows you to flicker cards. Teleportation Circle. So these are all ways, again, I imagine playing Torsten with a Teleportation Circle out. Gross. Draw five cards, flicker it, draw another six cards. Like, you're just, you're in heaven gross, at gross, that point. Gross. I love it. Um, now, of course, now what? You have all these cards in your hand, but you can't utilize them. What are you going to do? Well, you got burgeoning. So whenever an opponent plays a land, you may put a land card from your hand on the battlefield. Uh, you could play like land tax. Who cares? Just just get your land hand as full full of as possible and just <laughs> drop as many lands because you got your Azusa's, Dried of the Elysian Grove, Marasa Root Grazer, tap put a basic land into your, from your hand on the battlefield. Because I mean you're drawing all of these lands also. It feels like getting them out of your hand is a great way to go. Yeah, because otherwise um, you you just do this thing where you're like, cool, I just drew 15 cards. Everyone, do you want to murder me yet? And they're like, yes. It's like, well, fortunately, like, I've played out so many more lands. I can defend myself. I can mm-hmm. stop things from happening. Yeah. Um, mana bond. 
Man of Bond School, uh, once you've got all your creatures into the battlefield, uh, this says at the beginning of your end step, you may reveal your hand, put all lands cards from among it into the battlefield if you do discard your hand. Yeah. So once you've dumped all of your little creatures into play, you can uh, use your Mana Bond and get all of your lands into play as well. Hopefully then, you can get another flicker on. Yeah, if you have draw, Teleportation draw Circle, you can stack it so that you Mana Bond or you do that first, draw as many lands as you can, play them all, you know. There's lots of things you can do there. Pretty cool. Um, I really like Kodama of the East Tree in this deck. Yes. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put on the battlefield with this ability, you can put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. So you play a land, play another land. Kodama also seems like just a great way to get your hand... Empty. Empty as fast as possible. So you play Kodama first, you pay, play one of your one drops, you put a land into play, play a land, play another land. Yeah, yeah. And and all of a sudden you have, you know, six fewer cards in your hand. Um, and a, he's a creature, so you can draw him off of, uh, yep. off of Torsten. And if you don't have the ability to empty your hand, then you got your Reliquary Tower type effects. Yeah. And then you could also, I think you might want to play Seedborn Muse Vidalcanori if you're not looking to empty your hand. So that way you just have all your, you can keep on tapping, yeah. keep casting, keep blasting. <laughs> do everything you need to do to just go nuts here. Um, and I think we mentioned this earlier, but all those protection spells we mentioned, you know, the heroic interventions and all that stuff, you want to be playing those because you're going to make a very scary board state. You're going to you're going to be the threat. You've just drawn seven and cast a seven, seven. Yep. Um, so we focused a lot on the draw seven cards part of this, but there is another effect on Torsten. When when she dies, you uh, make seven one one soldier tokens. So hey. if you are focused on that, uh, there are lots of cards that you could include there as well. Of course, your anointed processions and parallel lives. So you make 14 mm-hmm. soldiers. Divine visitations, 14 uh, angels instead. Pretty good. Intangible virtue, creature tokens get plus one, plus one to have vigilance. Uh, um, you can play Luminous Broodmoth again. We've talked about this card three times now. It's great. Because your commander dies, comes right back, and has flying, and enters the battlefield, and you get the death trigger. Pretty mm-hmm. nice. Hour of Reckoning might be a win condition here. Four white, 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 convoke, and it destroys all non-token creatures. Yeah. Pretty nice. Uh, and then, of course, if you're playing a token deck in Selesnya, it's got to be Aura Shards. Oh, man. Gross. Aura Shards, Torsten, Sack Out, that destroy seven, Gross. or including Torsten, eight. Artifacts or enchantments. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. That's what we call backbreaking. And then you just drew seven cards too. Yeah. Fresh hand. Okay, Torsten. Pretty good stuff. Seven I mana. Torsten, yeah. Seven mana, seven mana. You're in Selesnia. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. fine. What are you worried about? All right, let's talk about the last commander from the box toppers. We got all the way to the letter X. It is Zyra. The golden sting. Yeah, for one and black, red, green. So a four mana, three, three insect assassin with flying and haste. Whenever Zira attacks, put an egg counter on another target creature without an egg counter on it. When that creature dies, if it has an egg counter on it, draw a card and create a one, one black insect creature token with flying. Okay, so this reminds me of uh, Mathis, Fiend Seeker, which is playing right. bounty counters on stuff, and you we've, want those things to die. We've seen these kind of c- cards before. So, like, Cheville is is yep. similar. It's in, only in Golgari. It's in green and black. Tetsamok puts bounty counters on things, and when they die, you get benefits, or you, you kill the things with counters on it. Yeah. Um, so, it, we're, yeah, we're putting bounty counters on stuff. The interesting thing about Zira that they don't usually allow with these is you can put it on your own creature. Yeah, usually it says a, a creature in opponent control. But in this case, Zira can put it onto your own stuff. And when that creature dies, you make that one, one black insect creature token and you draw a card as well. Which seems pretty good. Yeah, um, I, I like that strategy over putting them on your opponent's stuff because you get to use yeah. stuff like the Ozolith. Oh, yeah, it's Ozolith time. When stuff dies, the egg counter goes onto the Ozolith and then you can put it on another creature and you can keep reusing that egg, uh, counter, egg yeah. counter. And it doesn't matter if the creature has six egg counters on it. It's still going to just get you that one insect creature token. But this is a great way to like, hey, I put it onto my Sakura Tribe Elder. I'm going to sacrifice that. The counter Pretty goes good. onto the Ozolith. I draw a card, make a 1-1, one, one, and then I can move that counter to my Spore Frog or my yeah. Douthy Voidwalker. Uh, all cards that have the ability to sacrifice themselves and give you that sort of extra uh, bonus additional ability. Yeah, I love uh, creatures that sacrifice themselves here because you get a little bit of extra value out of the sacrifice and yeah, you're very much Yeah, kind of turns into cantrips almost. Yeah. 
uh, like a thrashing brontodon. For one green green, you can pay one sacrifice thrashing brontodon to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Or caustic caterpillar, which is a very similar mm-hmm. thing. Um, I like Iron Apprentice. It's a one mana zero zero enters the battlefield with a one one counter on it, and when it dies, if it had counters on it. Put those counters on target creature you control. Very cute. Love so, that. Very good. And then you're going to play your sack outlets like Viscera Seer, Ultra of Dementia. Mm-hmm. Um, these two cards that you put in, I think, are very good. These are pretty cool. Uh, so Generous Patron is a little bit different than what we had been talking about. But you can also take those egg counters and putting on opponent's creatures. And yeah. Generous Patron will reward you. It says whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, draw a card. It, it also, also has support too. So it will put two plus one counters on creatures when it enters the battlefield. Including opponent's creatures. So including you can, yeah. Creatures. So yeah, you every time you put an egg token on something you draw and then every time that thing dies, uh, it dies you could draw again. Yep. Which is pretty cool. Um, The other way of doubling up your egg counters is by doubling up your attack triggers. Uh, Putting Wolfgar of Icewind Dale in this deck. This handsome man? Is a neat move. He's hanging out with a big (laughs) bee. Uh, Wolfgar... (laughs) Wolfgar and just this bee Wolfgar friend. Wolfgar and the bee. Uh, <laughs> Wolfgar is a human barbarian for three red green. It is melee. It is a four four. It says if a creature you control attacking would cause a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So double the Zara triggers. So you can par- target two different creatures and get two egg tokens per attack. Yep. Uh, again, if you're putting the counters on your opponent's creatures, uh, Colrath Knight is like w- really sweet. This card's sick. It's really uh, rude. Uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> oh, I'll read it. This is Go three it. and then Rakdos, Rakdos, so five man for a three, three flying and wither. It deals damage to the for- in the form of minus one, minus one counters. But more importantly, creatures your opponents control with counters on them can't attack or block. So you you guys just wait right there. <laughs> Put them out of commission. They are now b sacks. Uh, it's pretty It's pretty good. It also, like, if you have this on board, nobody attacks you, right? Yeah, because you just block with the... Oh, uh, well, no one attacks you because you can just put counters on stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's pretty interesting because even there, they could just put a plus one, plus one counter on their creature and they no longer can do anything. It all Yeah, it has additional upside if your opponent's playing a counter deck. Uh, so yeah, this card can really gum up the board if you're just like, you know what? I need a little time yep. to curate my bug army and uh, Colrath Knight is really going to slow things down. Yeah. And if you're again you're putting stuff on their creatures then you've got you're in junt you are in the removal colors mm. so infernal grasp beast within go for the throat curtains call all of these are going to be able to kill creatures and give you your one ones and draw you cards putrefy bedevil we could go on and on and on and on and on absolutely but there's a lot of different ways to to sort of skin this pig or to i don't know uh milk this hive i don't know what do you do with hives you don't milk them you That's, don't you honey them you honey the hive you you there's a lot of ways to honey the hive you get the high the honey from out of there i'm so sorry i gave that other image to everyone of, <laughs> of milking a hive she's actually a bee <laughs> she's, she's a bee yes. she's a bee yeah, she's yes. an insect assassin and she's wearing she's one dress. of those if you look at the original zara it's kind of like why did they what when did a bee get into magic? OG magic art is incredible because they were just taking swings. Yeah, and, and now I like that we have to deal with because them. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because of the theme, they're like, we're going to take these old legends. They're like, well, we got to make another Zera. We got to make a Zera. Uh, yeah, this this one's pretty sweet. She looks well. like she could be on New Capenna, to be honest. She does. She doesn't definitely has like the the uh, cool cool party yeah. vibes. She def- yeah, she's golden too. And that, look at that hat. That hat's so cool. Okay, Got those it. are the commanders for the second half of the box toppers. Uh, now we're going to talk about our favorite as well as what we consider to be the most powerful. Spoiler alert, Rachel and I reached the exact same conclusion. We matched! In fact, probably based on our excitement when we talked about them on this episode, you'll be able to, to guess which ones we like the you most. You could probably guess. Um, but what was your favorite commander from the episode? It and was Stang. It's Stang. He's so cool! Oh, so Stangin'. It's so a cool. it's a totally new way to to do Voltron, and the fact that it gets a Voltron buddy is is yeah, just pretty sweet. It's so fetch. Yeah. Um, and the most powerful commander from this episode, uh, I believe, it's Torwaki the Younger. Yeah, which is crazy considering normally we're trying to find like the two mana ones or the one mana mm-hmm. commanders that are just like crazy. But in this case, Torwaki, we saw it on game nights. I don't think had I seen it on game nights actually, and had had played against Josh's deck build that I would consider it the strongest. But now. Seeing it in action and hearing a lot of what people talk about it, it to me really stands out as the most powerful. 
For sure. I if, if you're playing against Horwaki, you'll expect a lot of the storm synergy and it's going to be pretty tough to interact with. So you best keep that archer off yeah. the Ra- board. Rape shot for 10. That's pretty good. In that game. Pretty uh, good. I would say Torsten actually kind of is close to as well, either my favorite or powerful because again, drawing seven cards, pretty good. I agree. I think Torsten's a ton of fun and it's a cool way to do a Selesnia blink, which we don't often see. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, to the listeners. What was your favorite commander out of the bunch that we talked about today? What was your favorite commander out of the geez, 5,000 that we've talked about for Dominaria. Uh, <laughs> what are you excited to build? Do we miss any synergies that you think uh, is super sweet tech that we need to know about? Let us know in the comments. There's always such lively discussion down there. It's really actually quite a nice place. And I'm really proud of the environment that we fostered over the last, geez, eight years now. Oh my goodness. Uh, you can also tweet at us. You can tweet at Rachel at Rachel Reeks. You can tweet at me at JF Wong, Command Cast, Josh Lee Kwai. But before you do that, go on your computer or your phone. And head on over to www.channelfireball.com slash command because you want Torwaki. You want to play Grape Shot. You want to play Torsten. You want to be a bee. <laughs> <laughs> the Channel Fireball Marketplace has you covered for singles, sealed product, and more. Uh, you're shopping from local game stores around the country. There's nothing really much else to be said about that. You're supporting a real business and you're buying cards that you need because you're a Magic player. That's what we do. We need to get cards to play the game. Channelfireball.com slash command or enter promo code command at checkout. And then when you get those cards, ultrapro.com slash command or just buy some ultra pro product at your store sleeve those cards up make sure they're in pristine condition put them on a nice play mat make sure that it's not stained your stang deck needs to be perfectly in place mm-hmm. and you're going to need sleeves to protect it so ultrapro.com slash command okay no end step this episode's too long already <laughs> so let's move to our cleanup step big thanks to our amazing team here at the command zone damon lens ashlyn rose craig blanchett arthur meadowcroft lady danger manson lung josh murphy jake boss patrick nan jordan Pridgen, sam walder grov glide jamie block mitch trafford evan limberger josh lee Kwai of game <laughs> night's fame big shout out to truck tie who helps us a lot with the research for all of these uh and he's also puts together i don't know if you see us looking at this computer all these card images so that we're able to just reference them and not look on our phones um big thanks to you rachel for being on the show as of course, well thanks for having me yeah I'm sure everyone really appreciates your insight. I love, there was like seven cards today that I had never seen before. Here for the jank. I am here for the jank and for the power. And big thanks as always to Jeffrey Palmer. He does the living card animations that often live behind us on the set, as well as start our show on YouTube. You can find him at Living Cards MTG. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed all of our set reviews for Dom- Dominaria United. We have the In the 99 with Rachel coming up. So there's even more cards that you can put in your commander deck. But until then, happy brewing. Hope to see some of these decks out in the wild soon. Maybe at Magic 30. Are you going? I can't make it to Magic 30. Darn. Well, I'll, if I'll be I at the Magic Summit. If I see any of the cards that we talked about today, I'll think of you. Yeah, save a Stang for me. I will save a Stang. Maybe <laughs> I'll play Stang in your honor. Yeah, I want a twin. That's a Rachel twin. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll modify it so that you're the Stang twin and I'm Stang. Yeah. Oh, I love it already. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Peace. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>